remember when the year was starting, we, everybody got super excited because we looked at the calendar, and what did we see? The most important thing that was going to happen this year, okay? Somebody is going to agree with me. The rest of you might not. I don't care. Cinco de Mayo was coming up on a Tuesday. Do you guys, do you guys understand what that means? Taco Tuesday and Cinco de Mayo were going to go together, and it was going to be um, better than sliced bread, as your grandparents would say, right? Like, that's what this year was going to be. Like, we looked forward, and we we're like, oh, my gosh. This Some of you don't care about that. But I think when we looked at 2020, it's like, oh, man, it's a new decade, 2020, big things. I think a lot of us had some really cool things planned this year. I know I was pumped for Whitewater to happen. I, man. And then COVID hit, right? And then March 13th happens, and, like, everything shuts down. And life got difficult, right? Well, I, I want to we'll kind of walk you guys through my life back in the day. Um, I was a, a junior high, and then freshman year, kind of all this stuff happened. But for me, if, uh, I've talked to you guys a lot about this. For all of our sixth graders, you're going to get to know me a lot over the next, I don't know, some of you get held back four years if you don't three. Um, but for me, I grew up in church, right? My parents, my dad, my mom, they started a, a church with some friends. Um, I'm from Oregon, and so they started a church. So I grew up there volunteering. There, okay. Which part did you cheer for? Oh, okay. I, could have been anything. Could have been Taco Tuesday, but a couple minutes late. Um, but no, I, I, I grew up in church, right? And, and from a very young age, what I did was every weekend, um, I was volunteering, even when I was just a little kid, I was volunteering constantly. Um, and I was at church like five days a week, like doing different things, helping clean, setting up chairs, all these different things. That's just what we did, right? And back then, I feel like I had the best relationship possible for that age and for me and my circumstance uh, for, to have a relationship with God. I feel like it was the best I could have had, right? It, it was really good. I knew God. I got baptized when I was young. It, it, things were great. But then all of a sudden, I got around, around junior high, around sixth, seventh grade, and the church that I had been going to for most of my life, um, we moved from Oregon to Arizona, um, started getting a little, a, little, a little weird, right? Now, I know church, you can't really say that church is weird, but I'll say that the, the, the church to me got a little weird, right? And all of a sudden, it wasn't so much about having a relationship with God. It was, TJ, you're required to do these things, right? It was, TJ, I need you to come in uh, five days a week. I need you to do all these things. This is what you're supposed to do. You have to do this. You got to check this box. And for me, I was like, okay, like, I'll do that. And so for a while, I was doing that. I, I was checking the box. I was doing this, doing that. And I had a relationship with God, and things were good. But then more and more kept getting asked of me. And then while that was happening, while I was being told, you have to do these things, not you should volunteer if you want to, not here's why we give back, here's not, not why we do these things for God to, to share God's love with other people. No, no, it wasn't that. It was you're required to do these things or else you're not a good Christian. And that's pretty hard to hear, especially for your guys' age, right? If somebody says you're not a good Christian, but you're doing what you can, isn't that tough to hear? So all of a sudden, I'm hearing that over here. But then on the other side, I've got all these friends that wanted nothing to do with church. I've got all these friends who said, I, I, that's dumb that you go to church. Man, you, you listen to this God that died forever ago if he actually was here. There's a book that was written thousands of years ago that leads your life. And I was like, um, yes, 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 I do. And all my friends would make fun of me. All my friends were like, why would you do that? So now I've got a, a church group that's telling me I have to do this. Then I've got these friends that are pulling me this direction. And what happened was in the midst of this, I got stuck in this storm and these struggles, and I got split in between. And here's what happened. All these friends were like, you know, you, you guys are jerks. I, I don't want to hang out with you. So I lost my friends. But then the church was pulling me in this direction. I felt like that's not what Christianity is supposed to be, that we have to do these things, that we're required to check this box, that, that if we don't, we're bad Christians and so I said, you know what, Mom? I, I don't want to go to church anymore. Ma, I, if, this is, if this is who God is, I don't want any part of it. If they can't see who I am for me and see the relationship I have with God personally, I don't want any part of it. And the problem was this. I stopped personally connecting with God, and I started trying to figure things out with worldly things. Right? I, I started mixing up God and the personal connection I had with everything else that was going on. Right? I started connecting my friends and their view of church with who God is and the relationship I had with them. I started confusing who God is and the relationship I had with him with all the things I was required to do at church. Being there five days a week, setting up all the chairs, cleaning. I couldn't ever miss a weekend. If I did, man, ooh, you, be, you, you better work even more next week at church to make up for that. And But because of that, I said, Mom, I don't want to go to church anymore. And more than that, I said, Mom, I don't know that I want God anymore. And so for a season, I stepped out of church. 
For a season, I said, I said, you know what? If that's God, I'm done. I don't want it. That doesn't make any sense. But what happened was I got stuck in this storm of people and the church building. Because let me tell you this, guys. You see how we're all here, right? You see this big building? This is not church. This building is not church. This is where we come together as a community, but this is not church. Church is this. It's people. Church is us loving one another. But, again, I didn't see that. I got so caught up in what my friends thought and, and what the, the church was telling me I had to do that I said I don't want it. And I walked away. And that's the thing is, is I didn't feel connected to God because of the storm that I was in. But how many of us have ever been in a storm, Right? Isn't it crazy that we could go from, from sunshine and then when we get in a storm, we start to panic sometimes? Have you ever been on a boat in the middle of a storm? You guys ever panicked? Few people? Okay. Have you ever been in like the forest when it starts raining and winds going crazy and maybe some lightning's happening? It's kind of scary, right? Ernie wouldn't say so. Ernie's, Ernie's too strong. He wouldn't be scared. But sometimes when you're in the middle of a storm, we get, we get caught up in what's happening, in the wind and the thunder uh, and the lightning and the rain and, and, and being lost maybe. And we forget that, wait a second, we, we just came from there. Everything was good. Or, or what happens is we, we start getting caught in what's happening right now. We forget to look forward and go, no, no, there's, I can make it through the forest. I, I, I can make it out of the water. And we get so caught up in what's happening right now that we forget what we know and we forget what we've been promised right? We get so caught up in this that we get in the middle of this storm and we don't see that we're going to make it out. If you have your Bible, I want you guys to open up to Matthew chapter 14. You see, tonight I want to dive into a story that many of you guys have heard, and if you haven't, that's okay. But tonight what I want to do is I want to dive into a story that many of us have heard, but I want us to look at it in a different perspective, because here's the deal, guys. When we get stuck in a storm like COVID, how many of us through the past six months have felt like this is never going to end? Okay? Now, how many of you have felt like my walk with God has suffered because I didn't have church? But let, me, let, me, let me say, I'm not raising my hand just to show you, what, how, you how you answer. I, I've been there this, this past six months. Not having people around has been really tough for me, right? This, I'm telling you, I, I live for this. I love being with you guys. Seeing all your faces is amazing. Um, my small group, all these things, right? That's what we live for. And there's nothing wrong with that. But personally for me, this past six months has, re has been really hard because I haven't had the community around me to keep pushing me forward, right? Now, part of that, I'd say, is we need to work on that personally and for ourselves, Okay? And so this year, why we're calling tonight Refocus is because we want all of us to jump in tomorrow, not, not the next day, not the week after, not the month after, but we want you guys to see the storm you're in of COVID and this craziness and no school, no sports, all that stuff. I know things are coming back, but who knows what's going on. I want you to stop getting stuck in the storm and looking around and going, man, nothing's going to change. And I want you to look forward to what you know God has promised. And we're going to talk about that in a second. And I want you to look back to how good things were six months ago. Now, let me also say this. When I say good six months ago, I know for some of us, before COVID, this was already the hardest year of our entire life. I know for some of you, before COVID hit, things had already changed your world and flipped everything around, and you didn't really know where to go at that point, and then COVID hit. I don't want to ever say that things are always good outside of one circumstance. All of our lives are different. Everybody's going through something different today. Everybody's going through something in 2019. For some of you, maybe 2019 was worse than 2020. But what I want us to do is look back to when we felt God, to when you felt your relationship with God strongest. Look back to that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look forward. But right now, uh, Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. Again, as I read this, many of you guys have heard this story. And if you have, great. If you haven't, great. And, and we're going to dive into a different uh, perspective after this. So here's what it says. It says this, uh, verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Ooh. Again, this is a reminder. In COVID, things get crazy. Be by yourself. Guess what? COVID, we get to do that and pray, right? The cool thing about Jesus is he always 
lived and leads by example. So that's just a reminder of COVID. Even when we're alone, we should be praying. Later that night, he was there alone, uh, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. That means wind, waves, things are just kind of pounding the boat, and the disciples are out on this water, and it's it's further away. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. Here's where it gets good. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Now, again, let's, let's be really honest here. If you're out on a boat and all of a sudden you see some dude walking, you guys going to be calm? Probably not. You guys going to think it's like a magic trick? Maybe. You're going to think you're dreaming? Maybe, Right? I'm probably freaking out because I'm like, that dude's going to drown. Like, I don't know what he's walking on, but it's not going to work out. So we can't really blame the disciples here for being scared. But Jesus tries to call him. He says, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, ooh, man, Peter. Peter, if it's you, here we go. Tell me to come to you on the water. So Peter stands up and goes, all right, listen, Jesus, if that's you, if you're telling me not to be afraid, tell me to come out. Because if you command it, it's going to work out. He says, tell me to come out to the water. Peter kind of stands up and says, all right, guys, let me take charge. Let's let's see if this is really God. And if not, I'm going down. Let's figure this out. 29, come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. Jesus is standing there on the water. Peter steps out. He looks. There's a storm going on, but all of a sudden he sees what the goal is. He sees Jesus in the water. He doesn't get caught up in all the waves and all the scary stuff. He kind of moves past that because Jesus says, hey, take courage in his eye. Don't be afraid. And Peter, instead of getting caught up in everything going on, he says, all right, if it's you, tell me. Let's go. And Jesus says, come. So he says, all right, let's go. So he steps out and starts walking. And there's Jesus, and he's walking towards him. Things are good, right? All of a sudden, he sees where he's headed. He sees the light at the end of the storm on the other side of the clouds. He sees the sunshine. But I think a lot of us know what's about to happen. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. What happened? He took his eyes off the sunshine. He took his eyes off the end of the storm to what's past it. As we look at this, Peter is somewhere, let's just say Peter's like right about here. And he saw Jesus over here, but all of a sudden he sees the waves, he sees the wind, he sees everything, and he becomes afraid, and he starts to sink. I think so many of us are similar to that. We see what's coming. And I know in COVID, I know all this stuff is hard to see past it. But I know that if we really look, we know what's coming. Schools open back up. The church building opens back up. For some of you, you might say, well, when COVID's all fixed and I can be back together in my community, my relationship with God will come back. But the reason we say that, the reason that some of our relationships with God have dipped down So we've been so caught up in the storm around us, in our friends' opinions, in COVID, in no school. Peter is somewhere, let's just say Peter's like right about here. And he saw Jesus over here, but all of a sudden he sees the waves, he sees the wind, he sees everything, and he becomes afraid. And he starts to sink. I think so many of us are similar to that. We see what's coming, and I know in COVID, I know all this stuff is hard to see past it. But I know that if we really look, we know what's coming. Schools open back up. The church building opens back up. For some of you, you might say, well, when COVID's all fixed and I can be back together in my community, my relationship with God will come back. But the reason we say that, the reason that some of our relationships with God have dipped down, is we've been so caught up in the storm around us, in our friends' opinions, in COVID, in no school, in our parents' We get so caught up in what's going on, we can't see that God is still there. We stop looking forward, we start looking around. Our tunnel vision becomes so small, all we can see is all the crap that's happening right here. And I'll tell you this, those things are real. I don't want to tell you that the storms of life that you guys are dealing with right now aren't real, or they're not worth you stressing out about sometimes, or, 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 or that you're not going to stress sometimes. But what happens is we get so caught up in all the terrible things and the struggles and the difficulties that are happening right here, we forget to look and see how good God was, how good God is, and how good God is going to be. 
So his Lord save me. 31. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him saying, truly you are the son of God. Now let's take a look at the end really quick. All of a sudden the disciples go, truly you are the son of God. Why is that a big deal? It's because what we're forgetting as we read this and what the disciples forgot is what happened a few verses ago in verse 18. Anybody know what happened in verse 18? Jesus performed a different miracle. He fed 5,000 people with what? Two fish and five loaves. They just got done witnessing a miracle. And then the very first storm that they fall into, what happens? They're scared. They see Jesus out on the water, but they don't believe that he can do that miracle. He could feed 5,000 people and even more because they only counted men. He could feed all those people with nothing. And then we see him walking on the water, and that's when they go, truly you are the son of God. But what happened? As they went from that mountain where they fed 5,000, they went onto the water. The first storm they, they saw, they got caught in that storm. What they could have done is they could have looked back and said, wait a second, that's where he fed 5,000 people. He can surely save us on this boat. He can surely protect us. But they didn't. They got so caught up in what was happening, they forgot everything else they had seen and heard and been a part of with God. And isn't that just like us? You don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you, maybe if, as we talk about this, have felt like over the past few months that that's maybe what happened? As, as, as church closed down, as school shut, as all these storms, as, as parents, as, as family, as whatever's going on in your life, whether it's COVID or not, instead of looking at who God has been for you, we get so caught up in this storm's going to take me down. This is the end. This is it. There's no, there's no light on the other side. And again, I'll tell you this. Sixth graders, as you guys get to know me, anything I share up here is something that I deal with too. That's how I speak to you guys is from my life. I've been here the past six months. I've had struggles where I go, man, this is never going to end. As I've got kids, as I've got my wife and everything, we, we just go, man, when is this going to end? What's going on? And we forget that God is continually faithful. Now, in the midst of a storm, sometimes it's difficult, right? We're in the midst of this storm, you know, as there's these clouds in the way, but what do we have to do? It's continue to look forward. Many of you guys have heard this verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, right? This one always speaks so powerfully because it talks about how God views our lives and how God is going to take care of us. And here's what it says to remind us in the storm. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. If that wasn't in the Bible, all right, I'm going to give you guys a pass on this one. Let's all panic. Let's freak out and think maybe we can't get through the storm. Plan to prosper you and not to harm you. You see, in the midst of the storm, everything can beat against the boat. The waves can come crashing. The wind can come pushing. Everything can get crazy. The thunder can come down. The lightning can strike. But God is still with you in that. And because God, as he walks with you through difficult times, you're going to grow from it. Now, let me, let me tell you, I know that sometimes our parents say that and they go, oh, well, when you come out the other side, you'll be even stronger. And I know for some of us, we go, okay. But it's true. When God walks alongside you, it's because he wants you to prosper and grow and he will take care of you and he will be alongside you. But more than that, plans to give you hope and a future. Where's the future? It's just outside the storm. You see, if our future was in this storm, and this is all it is, well, then there's probably no light. But the future that God plans is bright and is full of love and is full of great things to come. But what happens is we get so caught up in right now, and I'm going to keep saying it. I know I sound like a broken record, but we get so caught up in right now where life sucks. that we begin for some of us to walk away from God. Because, oh, God, there's no way you're here in the midst of this. For, for some of us, we question anything we've ever felt with God. And we go, why would God do this to us if he loves us? But what I can assure you is this. 
God is with you. God is in the midst of the storm with you. He's out on that lake, maybe not in the boat with you, but he's next to you saying, hey, look, look at what I can do. Look, I can walk on water. Look, in the midst of the storm, I'm here. But it's up to us to say, God, call me out. And when he says come, that we do. We focus on him and we see past the storm. You know, tonight, as, as, we, as I was getting ready for this, one of my favorite movies of all time, I'm not going to say what it is, you're going to see it in a second, has one of the greatest quotes of all time. And it talks about a storm. It talks about darkness. It talks about fear. It talks about things that are not good in the world. But it talks about something that I know this isn't from the Bible. This is a movie. But for me, it truly is something that I can always remember, that God has a plan. And when I get caught in my own understanding, when I get caught in my own abilities, I know it sounds weird, but I honestly think back to this movie quote and go, that's, that's what God does for us. I want to invite the band back up, but check out this movie. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. I've called this press conference for two reasons. It's so funny as we talked through that, and it was funny earlier as I was showing the team, I was like, guys, this, this, I know it's not Jesus, but it kind of sounds like what he's talking about. Because where he talks about, he says, we've been so happy with, with Batman clearing up the streets and taking care for us. That's like us. Every day, no matter what day it is, life's hard, right? Bad things happen to good people. Crazy things come in the world, right? But we get so happy. Jesus is taking care of it. But all of a sudden, when things get hard for us, personally, we start to freak out. We start to get stuck in that storm and just look around at all the bad things happening right here when we don't acknowledge that bad things have been happening the entire time. But then where he says, the night is always darkest just before the dawn. What he's saying is, it always seems the scariest and the worst right before you're about to get there. And he says, and I promise you, dawn is coming. That's us right now in this season where no matter what your struggles are, no matter what bad things are happening, dawn is coming. But we have to stay focused on what's coming. We have to refocus our eyes, adjust our lens to be able to not see what's right here in front of us of what's happening, but to see what is coming and what God has planned for us. We're going to sing a couple songs together, um, and then we have one more thing at the very end. But let's take this time to refocus ourselves and to get right with God.